Hello guys, today we're going to take a look at how you would control the front loader on this CQ Control 32 uh, Fent 939 model. So this was an originally an RC tractor, uh, this one's not working. So I'm just going to show you how you would actually control the motors in the front loader. So this model is actually damaged so you can see the front axle here. And maybe it's hard to see in there but basically this lower section of the front axle the little rivets have kind of come apart so the axle splits here which means your steering is all out of whack it's not straight so uh, what I've done with this model was remove the control board and put it into a model where the control board had actually failed so uh, I wanted this one to put my own electronics into it so it was made more sense to put the good board into the tractor that was mechanically fine and we'll make changes to this model instead but today what we're going to look at is just the motors in the front here so i'll take it apart and what you'll see is it's kind of like a servo without the control board so there's a motor and there's a potentiometer well actually there's two motors and two potentiometers because you have a motor to raise and lower the, the uh, boom here and uh, there's one to tilt the bucket so that's what we'll do we'll open it up and just see what we have to work with so if we take a look at the first bit here we have our drive motor our servo for our lifting arms and our steering servo and if we take this apart you can probably see probably easier to see now that there's a gap there and you see the the wheel hub is kind of coming out so you can see that that piece is kind of floating around there and that's because those two rivets in there either they got damaged or uh, they just weren't manufactured right so it could be a defect from the factory I guess so we keep going because uh, all of this stuff we've seen before all we're really interested in is the uh, motors in the loader here because we haven't seen that in the model before so let's keep going. Okay, well we've gone far enough that we've exposed the wires for the uh, control here at the front. So what we'll do then, uh, rather than continue dismantling this, which should be a little bit complicated to get back together probably, we'll just open up a servo and I'll show you uh, all that's in that. It's exactly the same as this without the control board, so it'll be easier to show you by dismantling one of these because it's a bit bigger. So the first thing you can see here is our motor and although it's connected directly to the PCB here it's just a, a standard motor so in our tractor here two of these wires will be for the motor so that you can change the direction back and forward. Now if you're wondering why a CQ didn't just put a surfer board in to control this well they already had one PCB to manufacture so Rather than have to make two PCBs and pay for making two PCBs, all they had to do was add the components onto the control board, which would have been in here, but the one is obviously gone from this. But uh, it would have been much cheaper for them to put the components on the PCB that they were already making, and they had a space set out for it, so that's why they just went with that. And so all that's in here is a motor, goes to a gearbox, in this case the gearbox is in here, so you can see there's all your little gears your motor is spinning on this shaft I think it is yeah so your motor spinning in here that's turning all the gears which changes the output here so when this output gear moves it is connected through here to a potentiometer so as the uh, gearing 
changes here and this one rotates the potentiometer uh, has a voltage divider basically across it so you're changing the resistance on one side of the voltage divider which changes the output voltage of the potentiometer so as the output shaft rotates the potentiometer's voltage uh, changes the output voltage changes which the little chip on the board here can read and so it knows how far along the uh, rotation of the potentiometer the output shaft is so your potentiometer can probably do about 180 degrees and uh, it probably changes the voltage from we'll say 0 to 5 volts along that range and so your chip reads that it knows it knows from the voltage what angle this is at and so it knows to stop the motor when it reaches the angle that you've told it to so that's basically all that's inside this little uh, board here it's the same thing it's just instead of it being in a servo they just built it into their uh, their own you know, die cast housing there so that's a good way to do it in my opinion uh, it means that they have full control over the actuation of the controls rather than relying on the servo uh, to do it the code on the servo board could just be rubbish so it was better for CQ to uh, make their own board and make their own code so they had full control and that's going to leave things pretty easy for us we can just uh, take from those wires and hook them up to our own chip and then we'll be able to read the voltage and we'll be able to control the motor directly ok so I've took a bit of a look at the wiring loom we have here so uh, we have two motors obviously so they're on either side of our eight wires here so the red and the yellow is the bucket motor the black and the blue is raising and lowering the loader uh, beside the black and blue there there's grey and green that's where you put the voltage for your potentiometer so we are zero to uh, well whatever the battery you're using I suppose be 4.2 volts if it's a 3.7 volt lipo so whatever that voltage is your VCC is over the grey and the green doesn't matter which way you do it um, the brown wire then is the signal for your loader and the orange is the signal for the bucket so that's your feedback from your loader and your bucket now I have it hooked up to the voltmeter here I am connected to the brown wire which is the loader so if I make changes to the blue and the black wires we should see that signal change so as the bucket or as the loader lowers the signal voltage is lowering and as we raise the bucket or the loader I mean uh, the voltage is raising so let's just put that back to the middle somewhere okay now try and see the bucket maybe so now I want to hook up our signal to the orange wire and we're using the motor which is on the red and yellow wires so that will move our bucket so looks like when the bucket lowers the voltage goes up yeah, and as the bucket raises the voltage goes down so that's all we need to do when we're controlling this we need to send uh, well we need to supply the potentiometers with the voltage then we use our motor drivers to adjust the uh, well the power of the motors and using our PWM we can change the speed at which we change the the motors and then as the motors are moving through the gearbox the potentiometers are going to change so we need to read back the signal from our brown and orange wires and when the voltage on those wires equals the angle that we want then our code needs to know to stop the motor so that's what we need to do next basically we're recreating a servo type system so 
uh, when we write the code for this tractor we need to incorporate that or an alternative if you didn't want to do that you could always just splice in uh, two control boards from a servo so that would kind of work too you just uh, you might run into a little bit of trouble with the with the voltages on the potentiometers I'm not sure I've never actually tried to do it before where the two potentiometers are wired together or maybe you can separate the wires if you keep going in but uh, if you're already putting in a control board like mine where you have complete control of the chip well then there's not much point in adding in another two motors you've seen CQ didn't do it so why would you bother doing it so that's all I wanted to show you in this video in the next one we'll be adding my control board in here somewhere and wiring it all up it'll be the first time we've tried to control this many motors so you have two servos and three motors and it'll be the first time as well that with one of my boards we've tried to get feedback from potentiometers as well I don't think we've done that before so it'll be a good bit to learn as well as all our LEDs that we have on it um, I'd probably just leave it with the stock LEDs or maybe I'll add to it I'm not sure kind of see as we go along there is a lot of LEDs on it as it is although they're maybe not as bright as we would normally be uh, working with but Still, they're pretty good. But I'll decide all that uh, in the next video anyway. So, if you liked it, make sure and hit the thumbs up button. And don't forget to tune in for the next one. And that's pretty much it. So, thanks very much for watching.